presentation. I want you to know, and I don't know how many of you uh, have received this correspondence. I received it, and uh, I received it, and I'm going to read what I, how I, re I responded to it. Uh, to let you know that there's still enemies out there that for whatever reason do not like what we're doing here at the Mosque Cares. And as soon as I read this and get through this, I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, remove this gentleman as, as a friend of mine on Facebook because he's not no friend of mine. All right? His name is Nathan B.I. He sent this to me. Leadership Conference coming in February 2019 in Durham, North Carolina. Details coming soon. The people of W.D. Muhammad. And he has the man's picture here. Okay. Okay. This is what he just sent. This is the last information he sent. Leadership Conference, Saturday, February 23rd. You know the day that is, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, at Millennium Hotel in Durham. And then it says, this is, he sent this to me on, on uh, Facebook Messenger. And it says, your response will be visible to anyone on Facebook. And it asks, interested or going? I didn't touch neither one of those. And I sent back, I will be attending the Savior's Day program sponsored by The Mosque Cares, Ministry of Imam W.D. Muhammad. And I sent that back to him. And no, got no response back. Okay? Because uh, I'm not going to be one of those who are, but, but I'm just letting you know that there are people out there. And that, that's intentional. That's intentional. Some stuff that I don't even need to mention right now. <laughs> okay. But my wife, she advised me. I might take her up on this. Back. She said until Saturday, day, you don't even need to look at your phone. Yeah, well, she's pretty right. She's right. Because but they, they attack right before our uh, program, and they do it subtly, pretending that they're doing it out of love and yeah. concern for you. But yeah. then I think about it, I said, no, nah, that's, that's before Saturday's day. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. See, so now when I... um. I, I want to just read that to you because when I when I leave here, I'm going to um, remove him from my friends list. So I won't be receiving anything else from him because he's no friend. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 he is no friend. All right. All right, brothers and sisters. So now, this presentation, as you see in the Muslim Journal, uh, uh, the presentation is on some aspects of estate planning. Some of you may ask, do I really need an estate plan? Aren't you living? Right. You know, we're all living here, right? Uh, now, this is why I want to just reference my brother who was here um, about two or three first Sundays ago. I can make sure I, am I saying the name correctly? Yeah, okay. sure. I had to ask. <laughs> I'd ask his, his, uh, his name quickly. He made a comment during that presentation, all right? And as soon as he made that comment, I said, hmm, that's what I need to talk about one first Sunday. Uh, I was going to do it in my class. Uh, uh, but God willing, it came to, a, uh, I was able to do it. And now, let me just tell you what he said. Um, he was talking about documents, putting documents together to assist you in, in, in managing your life. And he said, uh, no one has a U-Haul truck that follows them to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. You all remember that? I don't know how many of y'all remember that. I remember it. He said, you, what did he say? Yeah. He said, no one, none of you, none of us. He included himself. None of us have a U-Haul truck that follows us to the cemetery. And that wasn't originally here. No, it was somebody else. But he mentioned it. And what he was saying is, you're not going to take anything away from here. Okay, except what you came with. Okay, everything else is going to be left here. He said. Now the key thing is, how is it going to be distributed? What are you going to have anything to say about who it goes to? And, and have, you, have you put anything in place? Okay, and he talked about documents. And he talked about one, you know, several documents that in some businesses where you, um, where um, if the only person that knows you sign it is you, and the bank loan officer or someone else, you know. And you are the only ones party to the signature. Okay. But he said, but you need, <clears throat> in this case, you need some kind of document that is witnessed by others. If you want to have your, your uh, belongings or whatever, or what you've accumulated and what they use, the term they use is assets, distributed the way you want them distributed. 
All right? And he said, that's when you want to be able to trust. I don't know how many of you all remember that. I remember it because I've dealt with trust, okay? And uh, I, it, 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 I remember it very well. Well, let me, that's going to be the uh, title of this presentation. And I'm not going to be able to do justice to it in just one setting. So, inshallah, one day, I'm not saying whenever today, but whenever the mosque has, allows me to come back, I'll do a part two. Because you can't do all of this in just one part, all right? Um, now, I have this up on the board uh, because I'm going to call your attention to this in a second. Before I get to it, let me tell you how we tr started down this road, estate planning. Um, I have an excellent partner as a wife, excellent partner, all right? She was the one who started our family on this journey, all right? She started and she contacted uh, this, I'm going to talk to you about who she contacted, but I want to let you know it right now. I'm not endorsing anything of hers. I'm not endorsing no products. I'm not suggesting you use anything from her, all right? If you decide you want to do that, you can, because there's a cost to it. Um, but this is how my wife began, and she began and, and connected with her um, <clears throat> when her whole program was on CDs. She paid for the program, she got the CDs, and she put these documents together and we've worked through it as a family, and we've come down to why, how we're going to make it work for us. Uh, so what I'm going to be talking about to you today is uh, these four. There are four must-have must documents that she refers to them as. And I'm going to recommend that you look at them and you see if you can make them or you need to make them work for you and your family and your situation. <coughs> but uh, now let me bring her up. And... <coughs> and uh, okay. Susie Orman. How many of y'all have heard of Susie Orman? Okay, I pretty, pretty much most of y'all have heard of Susie Orman. All right. Susie Orman. I just want to go right down really quick uh, before I, yeah. All right. Um, she has an online program. It's all online. Now, it was in CDs. It's all online. She said there are four must have documents that every family should have. One is a will, one is a revocable trust, one is a financial power of attorney, and the other is a dual party, a dual power of attorney for health care. Those are the four must have documents that she recommends. Alright? All right. Uh, what we were able to do using her program was to work through what we needed for our family. And I have one plus, but I've had a brother always ask me, uh, can I refer uh, a lawyer to him? I have one plus, because my brother is an attorney. Not only is he an attorney, he was a judge. And then he retired from judge and went back and started his, his um, law firm back up. His <clears throat> the last name is Studley. It's Michael Studley. It's Studley and Associates. And um, I called him and asked him when I was when we were finalizing a few things, and he said um, he recommended a couple of things to me, and I'm going to I'm going to relate to you what he recommended to me for our situation. But my wife and I is just my wife, my myself. We have one son, and we have three grandchildren, and that's all we have in our immediate family. All right. Everybody's family is different. Everybody's situation is different. So I'm going to use myself and what we're doing as an example, but that doesn't mean you do the same thing I did. Mm -hmm. All right? That means you look at this and you, look and you take what's best for you. There are two documents that we all should have, though. It has nothing to do with our family situation. That is a financial power of attorney and a dual power of attorney for health care. You need to have that. Why? My wife and I, we're going to go home, inshallah, when we leave here. We're going to get in the car. There's no guarantee we're going to get there. There's no guarantee we're going to get there. Or if we get there, there's no telling what kind of situation what may happen on our way there. You know, an accident can happen in a second. And all of a sudden, you're not in a situation to take care of any kind of business. You can't even talk. You can't, you can, no one, you can't even tell a, a doctor or a nurse or anyone what, can, what, what they need to do for you. So that means somebody that you designate 
You need to have that authority to do that. All right, someone that you trust. All right, uh, don't say, oh, it won't happen to me. You know, a lot of people have said that, and it's happened to them. And there are people who made decisions for them that they didn't, if they had known that that person was going to be making decisions for them in terms of the health care, they just, oh, no, no, not that person. You know, uh, and it can be your brother, it can be your sister, it can be whoever it is, you know, but you, that's not the person you want to make no decisions for you, for your health care. Okay? You know, okay, so that means you have to do it. All right, and the dual power of attorney for health care, that's the document to do it in. And in Illinois, each state has one particular for that state. What we were able to find out from Susan Orman's uh, information was she gave, you, she gave us a, uh, gave the information where you can get that information. It's online for your state. And my wife and I, we, we got it for Illinois. We've completed it. And we brought it today because we want to have it witnessed. Because it's not uh, enforced unless it's witnessed. Then we, after we witness it, then we're going to make copies and give it to each one of the people that we have designated to make that for us for health care. Okay? So that document you need to have. All right? I'm encouraging all of you, please do that. Do that for yourself and for your loved ones. All right? We even have in there that <clears throat> I, uh, we are not to be resuscitated. Uh, if we're going into a vegetative state, cut off the machines, cut it all off. Not to be resuscitated. And when we pass away, we had to have a Muslim burial. Not in bombing. We put all that in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Why? Because we're Muslims. In my family, I'm the only Muslim. You hear me? <laughs> I'm the only Muslim in my family. All right. Uh, and so if my wife, something happened to us together, the good, the blessed lesson is, for well, our son is the next, and, uh, and uh, he's a Muslim. Well, we raise him as a Muslim. You know, how he practice, but he's a Muslim. Uh, so uh, this is why it's so important that you, this is the information that you want to have in there. All right, so that's the, I don't want to go through the whole document, but that's one of the documents you, you want to make sure you have. The other is the financial power of attorney. If something happens to us, who takes care of the financial situations for your family? Who will take care of us? How will my son be taken care of? How will my grandchildren? What is it I want to have for them? What is it you want to have for your, your, your family? If you don't have this document, no one can read your mind. You, 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 know, you, may, you might wind up in a vegetative state. Who's going to take over for you? Okay. If you don't have anything appointed, it's the laws of that state that dictate what happens. Okay. And you may not have no desire for the laws of that state to determine your financial situation and what, how you want things to be done. All right? The only way that doesn't happen is that you have to set it up. And so that financial power of attorney, that document, you need to complete it. There are some financial institutions that don't recognize that. So contact your financial institution, and they have another document that they want. Uh, I found, I've contacted mine, and we've, we've done it. Uh, I've filled it out who's the beneficiary, who's the contingent beneficiary, so that that's what they, that's what they use. Um, this is what you want to have done, all right? Uh, so that <clears throat> if something happens, a lot takes you away from here, and we're all leaving here one day. We don't know which day that is. You want to have all this in place. You know, I talked about this when we talked about the um, checklist. We had this conversation with our son. You know, we had it for about 20 minutes. And boy, he was ready to say, so that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Um, I, we told him, that's not to say we're going to leave here tomorrow, son. What we're saying is, if we leave here together, you have to take care of this. You are the one to take care of this house, you're the one to take care of it. And this is how we want things done. If you don't know this, and we don't tell you this, you won't know. And we had that conversation. He knows where the documents are. Now, even though, even though you know, my son is very emotional. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm talking about emotional. And when things like that happen, I know he's going to be. So we have a contingent. We have a, uh, we have a cousin or whatever that can help him. I'm, I'm telling you now. I, we, I already know this. So we have a cousin. She's straightforward. Niece. No, a niece. Niece. His cousin. Our niece. 
This is what 